Today I'll be going over 16mm film emulation Cineprint 16 version 2. The fastest, easiest, and safest way to grade with it. We'll be grading this clip. Here is the before and the after. Before they. So we're in the color tab of DaVinci Resolve 18 and all we're going to do is go to a gallery, go to a power grades, double click or right click on Cineprint 16 version 2 and then press apply grade. So this node tree will pop up. It may look a little bit complicated. However, what I'm going to do is show you things that you only really need to use is we're going to forget all of this and we're going to start with CST, which is color space transform. And this is where you're going to input the camera settings that you used when you shot your own clip. If you go and press effects, you'll see this input color space and input gamma. And these are the only two things that you need to change. For this clip, we shot it on the Canon R5, on Canon Cinema Gamut and C-Log. So we're just going to find Canon Cinema Gamut, Canon Log 3. However, say if you shot it on a different camera, like on this clip, which was shot on the Sony 7 III with S-Log 2 and Rec 709. So if I double click, go to my CST, press FX, then I can go to my input color space, which for this clip we used Rec 709 and for the input gamma we used S-Log 2 and you'll be able to see if this adjusts it to the correct color space transform. Everything else, you just leave. I know it says here your output color space is to the RE space. Just leave it. You don't really need to understand, but if you do understand, it makes the process a lot more sense. So if I go back to this original clip, we'll just keep going through the node tree and I'll explain what, what you need to adjust and what you don't need to adjust. You don't need to touch node number six. Your camera white balance will go back to this in a bit, but this is just changing your white balance, your camera exposure. This is what we're going to change first. So as you can see, this clip is a little bit overexposed and all you have to do is go to your primary color wheels, go to your offset and then just reduce this or increase this if your clip is underexposed. So I'm just going to decrease this here-ish. That looks all right. You may want to face contrast levels and things, but we're going to do that later on with this contrast node here. So you don't need to really adjust contrast too much. Once you fix your camera exposure, then you can get a better determination of if your camera white balance is correct. If it isn't, then you can click on your camera white balance, go to your effects, and you'll see this menu pop up. If your footage is too warm, you can go to your Kelvin and reduce this. So if I was to drag this down, you'll be able to see it gets cooler. And if your footage was too cold, then you'll be able to increase this. However, if you are shooting with raw footage, um, you probably already know this, but you can be able to use the raw tab right here and change your ISO in post. So once you fix your white balance, you can fix your temperature here and your tint right here, more green, more magenta. I'm just gonna leave it to how it was. And then all I'm gonna do now is you have your halation node. So halation is just this little bit of orange bloom on the side of your edges, essentially. So wherever there's, you know, highlighted edges, usually you'll get a bit of halation. It's an artifact of film. So Tom who created this power grade, he's in a really clever method and it's probably one of the better methods that I found of creating halation rather than using the inbuilt DaVinci halation, which is found here. I found the DaVinci Halation is good, it's a great alternative way, however I found Tom's method has a just a bit more precision and it looks a bit more real as well. All you have to touch within this node tree, which does look a bit complicated, is this node, your node number 6. forgot to mention, to get into this node, all you have to do is go into your Halation node, right click and press show compound node, and to get back out of it, just double click on where it says Cineprint 16 version 2.0 and you'll go back. So once I am in this node, all I have to do is go to the blur tool and to increase the amount of Halation, all I'm going to do, take this up and as you can see the halation is has gone out of control but if you're trying to go for a wacky stylistic effect this may actually look cool and if you wanted to decrease the amount of halation you bring this and to get no halation you take this to 0 0.50 so here you'll have no halation we do want halation of course so i'm going to bring this to about just find a point or use reference images from films or whatever you're trying to reference or a look that you're trying to recreate a similar level of halation from that. About there, you can see the halation on his shirt. So if I go back to the original node tree, turn this off and on, turn a node off and on, just press the number or you can press command D if you're using Mac or control D on PC. So I'm gonna turn this off and turn this on and you can see the halation just on his shirt and on the hair lines, which looks really nice. The next two nodes, Precon and set. You can leave these two nodes, don't touch these at all. We can adjust contrast and saturation later. Then you have your blur node and your grain node on nodes 12 and 13. So in your blur node, the 60 millimeter look is often quite soft. There is a little bit of a blur that is added here just through the use of Gaussian blur. And if you wanted to have your footage to be more blurry, you can increase this. And if you wanted it to be less blurry, you can obviously take away the blur completely if you wanted to as well. 
but I'm just going to keep it to where it was originally. So I think that looks good. And then the next node is your grain node. So this is film grain and I usually leave this to how it is. Sometimes I want more grain. So what I might do is increase the grain strength, which you can see here. Alternatively, what you can do is just go to the opacity and increase the opacity a bit more. However, if you don't have DaVinci Resolve Studio, you realize you can't use the inbuilt film grain effects because you'll get a watermark that pops up. That's because it's only a tool that you're allowed to use with the studio version. However, to get around this, we've created some grain overlay assets that you can find by clicking the link in our description and then just downloading the film grain overlays from our Google Drive folder for completely free. And this is a good alternative and an easy way to get around this. We were using the free version of DaVinci Resolve a few years ago. This is the method we used and it worked completely fine. The next node is dust. So this is turned off, but you can turn it on by again, pressing the number. So we're gonna turn dust on just to show you. You can adjust the dust density here and you will see you get dust particles which appear on your clip, which looks kind of Cool. The reason for this is when you shoot on film, you get film negatives and then you have to scan those in. And when sometimes when you scan those in, there may be dust that may be overlaid on top of the actual film. And when it gets scanned in, obviously the dust gets scanned in as well. So it depends how clean the scanning process is essentially. So you can change this to get more dirt, change the dirt size, you know, the dirt blur, however you want to go with it. I'm just going to keep this off for now. Then and sub, this kind of creates the tonality of the film lock. Turn this off and then turn it back on. You'll be able to see it really helps to create the film lock and get those nice skin tones and colors within the frame. These nodes right here, really often you can take these off. However, if you do have a really bright color within your node tree, all you have to do is use NS matrix. So usually with ears or hands, they may be oversaturated. This is known as neon suppressor matrix, I think. So what you can do is turn this off. As you can see, if you look at the ear, so I turn this off and on, just suppresses the really saturated areas of the clip. So if I was to turn this off, and on suppresses a lot of the colors for now i'm just going to leave this on i think it looks okay then you have these other nodes which i don't really touch too much so we're just going to skip these and then you have the highlights node we'll leave this on as well this produces the correct highlight roll off almost for the clip so if i was to turn this off it does help with the den and sub to create that tonality for the 16 millimeter film look the next few nodes these are ones that you can adjust so grade white bounce so wb just means white bounce same with this one here after you've done so once you're creating your global look essentially at the end you can use your grid white bounce the default with the grid white bounce push towards the blue a bit if i was to reset this you can see you can see the clip is now too warm so it really does if i was to reset this it really does help bring in that look there's grid primaries and grid saturation say if you want to now saturate your image a bit more or decrease it then you can do it here and the main one that you'll probably be playing with a bit is your post con which is your post contrast so your contrast after you've done all of this post contrast you can just go to your contrast levels here you can increase it adjust the pivot and find the right place for you so i might keep it there maybe reduce the pivot a little bit hl soft you can either keep this on or off this basically clips your highlights a bit so you can see in his t-shirt or the window the highlights get clipped and you just get a bit more of compressed look which can look cool but i'm just going to keep it off for now then at the end you have your print film load and your sinion node these are two different looks so the sinion film look is this look that we're looking at currently however if i was to turn this off and then turn on the print film look you'll see we get a completely different look a lot of modern films these days are process using print films such as Kodak, Vision, Stocks and things like that. Right click and show compound node for your print film. You have these six conversion LUTs for your clip. So I think these ones are Kodak LUTs and these ones are Fuji LUTs. Could be the other way around, but I think it's, I think I'm correct. So if I was to turn this off, you'll be able to get six different LUTs. So you have this look, this look, this look, if I find a better frame, this look, this one, and this. So these are the different frames essentially for your clip. And then you can just pick and choose which one you like best. But for now, what I'm gonna do is go back to our node tree, turn off the print film and go to our Sinion and leave the Sinion node on. Here we have the post con and the warmer node and the sharpen node. You can leave the sharpen node. That's just sharpening your image through this blur tool with the radius. And if you want it more sharper, you can bring this down and you have this wacky look. Um, I just usually just keep it at 0.47 actually. And your post con, this just adds a bit more contrast to your image if you wanted that. And warmer, this obviously, as the name says, it just warms up your image. However, if you're not liking the colors of the skin or a particular object you might want to do some masking and the problem with cineprint 16 is that there's so many nodes things can get a bit unorganized so if i was to move this a bit higher move this a bit lower 
any masking you want to do, you want to do it within this space that's been left here. So after the saturation node, I'm going to make one more node, bring this down, bring another node by pressing Alt S to make new nodes. And then I'm going to press Alt L to create a layer mixer node. Bring this up. As you can see, it's looking a little bit messy. And this is why it may look a bit daunting. However, once you understand the process, it gets relatively simple. However, for beginners, I can understand it may look a little complicated. So say I wanted to adjust the skin with layer mixer nodes. It's basically if you're used to something like Photoshop, these are basically layers. The foreground layer is is the bottom layer and the background layer is the top layer. The thing I do here won't be affected by anything that I do here. So what I mean here, if I show you, if I was to come here, select the skin, press shift H, see our selection, and you'll be able to see that we've selected the skin. And then you can make your refinements, do some denoising and adjust the blur. I'm just gonna do this very roughly. And then say you wanted to shift the color of the skin to be a bit more reddish, just to have a bit more saturation. So you gotta, I could put the saturation up like so. And now if I was to change anything on this node, such as if I was to push the high highlights towards the blues, you'll be able to see that none of the skin that I selected on this foreground node was selected. And that's the beauty of the layer mixer node and why the layer mixer node is probably one of my favorite tools for color separation and creating really strong looks using 10-bit um, or 8-bit footage. So I'm just going to reset this, bring the saturation back here. I might do a little adjustment. Maybe I'm just going to bring the midtones down a bit just so they're not too hot. And then what I'm going to do is come to the foreground node. Of course, you can label these as well. You know, you can label these as background and this one as skip. This node you can kind of keep off. It just helps to organize your clips. And with the background, you may want to reduce the highlights or you may want to increase the saturation a bit of your overall clip. Depending on what look you're trying to go for, just choose whatever. And then you have your clip. So you have a before and an after. So I'll do it again. So before and an after. So that's the overall look with Cineprint 16 version 2. I hope that made sense. Just remember, you don't need to use all the nodes within this node tree, you just have to use a few. Hence why I've been building my own power grid, which is a lot more simpler than this and a lot more beginner friendly and is a lot more easier to make masking adjustments. Masking and color separation is one of the best ways to upgrade your color grading work and just overall increasing the production value of your video work. So yeah, thank you.